Hello friends, welcome back to physics and animation. Today we are ready for the 10th video of the 12th physics animation series. And we'll learn something new today. So let's start today's video by considering two point charges separated by distance d and are placed close to each other, where one charge is positive 10 and other charge is negative 2. In the previous video, we learned that charges with higher magnitudes tend to result in a greater number of electric field lines. Although the exact quantity may not be determined, there is a general rule that states a higher magnitude of charge result in a greater number of electric field lines. Let's assume that there are two electric field lines per unit charge. Based on this assumption, the positive charge of magnitude 10 will have 20 radially outward electric field lines. And we know that electric field lines originate from positive charges and terminate on negative charges. According to our assumption, there should be four electric field lines originating from the positive charge and terminating on the negative charge as the magnitude of the negative charge is 2. Now, if we zoom out and observe the two charges from a distance, we see that the electric field appears to be radial. We can see 16 electric field lines that resembles the outward radial pattern of positive 8 charge, which represents the approximate electric field of the positive charge of magnitude 10 and negative charge of magnitude 2. It is approximate because the distance between the two charges is not zero, which could affect the net electric field. Okay, but what happens? If both charges are equal in magnitude and opposite in sign, that is, one is positive 10 and the other is negative 10. Please note that. Now the net charge is zero. Will there still be some electric field? Let's understand this. Now, we know that, according to our assumption, 20 electric field lines will originate radially outward from the positive 10 charge. And since the magnitude of the negative charge is also 10, all 20 electric field lines will terminate on the negative charge. And we can see that the electric field is not zero, but rather we observe a beautiful pattern of electric field lines due to two poles, positive and negative. This kind of system of charges, where two equal and opposite charges are attached to each other at a fixed distance, is called an electric dipole. Despite the net charge being zero, the reason for the electric field is not zero here, is that the two opposite charges are not coinciding or overlapping. There is always some distance between them. Therefore, both charges create their own electric field, resulting in the observed electric field pattern as we just visualized. Let's take a step forward and understand the electric dipole in an even better way. What happens? If an electric dipole is placed in a uniform electric field, as soon as the electric dipole is placed in the electric field, a force starts acting along the electric field on the positive end of the dipole and in the opposite direction of the electric field on the negative end. This creates a clockwise torque and causes the dipole to rotate about its center of rotation. If distance between the center of rotation and the two poles of the dipole is L, then the torque due to the negative pole is given by the F multiplied by L. Similarly, the torque due to the positive charge is also F multiplied by L. Since both torques are rotating the dipole clockwise, the total torque is the sum of the two, which is equal to 2F multiplied by L. We also know that F is equal to QE, where E is the electric field intensity. If the electric field is kept constant, then the torque acting on the dipole depends on 2QL, which demonstrates the effectiveness of the dipole and is given a special name called the dipole moment, represented by the capital P. In terms of units, the dipole moment equation consists of a charge Q in coulombs and the length in meters, resulting in the unit of the dipole moment being coulomb meter. In this term, we can see that the dipole moment depends on the magnitude of the charges and the length L from the center of rotation. If we talk about vectors, L is a vector quantity, so the dipole moment is also a vector quantity. It has a direction, which is typically from the negative end to the positive end in physics. The torque will continue to act on the dipole until the dipole aligns parallel to the electric field, 
we will discuss the torque on the dipole in more detail in the upcoming video now the question arises as to why we are trying to understand the dipole and whether they exist in real life yes they do exist the practical application of dipoles is to understand molecular behavior which affects physical properties such as melting point boiling point and more for example the molecule of hydrochloric acid hcl has chlorine which is highly electronegative and hydrogen which is positive creating a permanent electric dipole when this type of molecule is placed in an electric field torque acts on it aligning the dipole parallel to the electric field the alignment of these molecules can affect various properties of a solution such as freezing point boiling point optical properties like refractive index and more hcl is an example of polar molecule that forms a permanent dipole but if we consider the molecule of carbon dioxide co2 in this molecule carbon is positive and the center of charge of the electronegative oxygen coincides with the carbon resulting in no separation of positive and negative charges and therefore no electric dipole but when a co2 molecule is placed in an electric field the center of charge of the electronegative oxygen atom shifts creating some separation of charges in this way co2 molecules behave like electric dipoles under the influence of an electric field and these types of dipoles that behave like electric dipole under the influence of an electric field are called temporary or induced dipoles so that's all for this video thank you so much for watching